Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and the visionary of the Valder Beebe show, God Talk. Some people talk to God and others believe that God talks to them. Join us in conversation with authors, religious clergy, metaphysicians, and regular people like you and I and God Talk. God Talk is a podcast available on FM Radio, Roku TV, and online. Subscribe at ValderBBShow.com. You can also subscribe at YouTube.com slash ValderBBShow. Join the conversation of God Talk. I'll see you there. Good day and welcome to the Founder BB Show as I present my first guest for today. I will have you talk to Shan Boudram. She's with Bumble and she's going to talk about a recent survey from Bumble. And it's about uh, a woman's first dating and social networking working app. Shan, welcome to the Founder BB Show. Thank you so much for having me. And the trends are looking up. People are looking for connections and people want something new, but we're also taking some of the old trends that we used to see pre pandemic. And those are coming back into the picture. So it's a nice, healthy mix of nostalgia and progression. So I'm really excited to share the stats with you. Okay. So what does the survey, uh, reveal about 2022? Give us some details. All right. So first and foremost, over one in three people are looking for explorer dating, which essentially means that they want something different. I think that in the past, people were really clear on what they're looking for and how they want it and where it's going to be. And now people are like, just give me something new and something fresh. So you're seeing where people go outside of their usual types, also go outside of their cities to find love. There are people now who are saying that they are consciously single. This is a new term and a beautiful term for people who say, I'm not with somebody, but I choose that for myself. This is a place of empowerment, not desperation for me. Another trend that we're seeing is a rise in dry dating. People who are saying, more than pre-pandemic, I want to be on dates where no alcohol is involved, or I'm open to being on dates where no alcohol is involved. And the last trend that I think is really exciting is power PDA. More people than pre-pandemic are open to PDA. So you might see a rise in some public makeouts, which I wouldn't mind after a couple of years of not seeing mouths. Okay. Uh, explain dry dating for me. So a dry date is a date that does not include alcohol. So majority of the time when we think about what the ways that we connect the first time we meet somebody, it's let's go to a bar or we're going to go out for cocktails or go for dinner and then we'll get a drink or two. And that's great for a lot of people who are choosing that. But some people in the pandemic decided that there's a new version of wellness for them and they want that reflect on the dates that they're going on, or they're just more comfortable in their skin and want people to know exactly who they are. So I think that dry dating is a good trend um, that puts people in control. I think control, you know, as we talked about, you know, Bumble is a women's first app where women are in control, but that word in general, I think really summarizes the trends of 2022. People want more of that in their life. Okay. And tell me a little bit more about PDA. So PDA, you know, public displays of affection, whether that be handholding, making out, I hope the line gets drawn there because then we get into territory of get a room. But by and large, a lot of people were really uh, uncomfortable with that, especially when you think about new connections. It feels like a thing that should be earned over time. But more people are like, I just want to connect and kind of going back to that explorer dating. I'm not putting so many limitations on what can and can't happen. I'm just here to be the best version of myself and have the best experience I possibly can with someone unexpected. Okay. Let's talk about the profiles that they need to attract someone. Uh, what's going on there? Give me a little bit of tips and information on that. Absolutely. Profiles matter. And I think a lot of people have this notion that mystery is sexy when it comes to dating, that less is more. That could not be more opposite in terms of what actually sees success. What sees success on dating apps are people who are utilizing all the various features and places to tell people who you are. What's actually really cool that profiles are now doing on Bumble, there's a brand new redesign for the new year where you're not going to just see somebody's face. You're also going to see a little bit of their bio and their badges, their interests 
things that they're most proud of about themselves, the things that they are passionate about, their morals, their values, what they stand for, or what they do on the weekends. And that's important because we know that similar attracts similar. And so we need to know more about someone to see if we're actually truly a fit for the long term or even just for a short term good time. Uh, but when it comes to pictures, pictures do still matter. So please, basic tips no sunglasses, no group shots, um, nothing distracting. That includes over-filtered photos. People want to see more of who you truly are. It's a fast first impression. So let, let, let the real you shine through. How is Bumble making it easier once again for people to connect with each other? So Bumble's making it easier by giving you more of an opportunity to showcase who you really are. We now know that moving forward, one of the big trends is that people are looking for intentional connections, not just to connect with anybody. Kind of going back to that consciously single trend, people are saying, I'm happy being by myself. So if I'm going to choose to connect with somebody else, it better be a quality connection. And in order to determine if a connection is quality, I got to know more about you than if your teeth are straight. I need to know if we have similar value systems, if our politics align. Um, if you're funny in your bio, that's another huge tip for this year. Keep it light. It's been heavy for a lot of us. And I know that we can really go there, but keep it light. Keep it funny. Let your sense of humor shine. That's going to get you the best results. Is there a, um, certain age that Bumble likes to work with its clients or is it just open to anybody? It's open to anybody. And what's really incredible about Bumble, it's not even limited to just dating. So they've got uh, Bumble Biz, which is ways to make connections because not everybody is looking for that kind of connection. And going back to that word control, I want to feel like I'm getting exactly what it is I signed up for. And some people are not on dating apps or because they want that kind of connection. And so I think that Bumble's doing a really great job of listening to the ways that people want to make meaningful connections going forward. And that isn't always romantic. And that isn't always with people, you know, who are just in their twenties. So diversity is extremely important and giving people control of what kinds of connections and with who is paramount. All right, then where can we find out more about Bumble, especially those people who want to be on dating sites? So dating Sunday is coming up. So if you have been you know, a little bit nervous before this is your day to dive in. It's the first Sunday after January. And if you want to learn more, I think it's important to read more about the survey because you want to have the best idea of what the trends are so you can get ahead of them. So you can go to the Bumble website to read the full details on that. And if you feel inclined download an app. You know, if you have been staying away from them before because you weren't too sure if they were for you, I think now is a great time to look and see what incredible updates have been made that have you in mind. All right, then I'm going to take this last question from social media. They want to know that they're in the baby boomer age and is there a place for them on Bumble? Absolutely. So silver seekers is actually a new term and there's a rise in silver seekers, which are people who are older and some people who are onto their second relationship or after their first marriage um, that are entering into the dating market. And there is a huge demand for services that allow those people to find the kinds of connections that they want. And again, with Bumble, you can put yourself in the driver's seat and choose who you want to talk to and what you want to talk about, uh, whether that be business or friendship or budding romantic connections. That's exciting because my audience is made up of 89.9% .9 baby boomer women. I'm sure there's a couple out there want to be on the Bumble app. And then I thank you so very much, Shan, for coming on the Valder BB show and talking about, you know, finding a little happiness. I really appreciate that. All right. Cheers to you. Happy New Year and happy Dating Sunday. Hi, I'm Valder BB. I host the Valder BB Show, broadcast on radio and television, and this is My Phone Pouch. My Phone Pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.